Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favourite skits. I'm Combine Elite, and today we're looking at Gary's Mod Skits, a series released in March 2020. The series was made by a guy named The Rodway, who in July of 2021 rebranded to Exonite. Gary's Mod Skits follows the journey of Combine Elite, played by a 14 year old Exonite. On the way, he encounters random characters, where at the end of season 1 we finish with a big boss fight. This series is well known for it being really random and downright terrible. So, how many people die in Gary's Mod Skits? Let's find out and get to the kills. We begin with a 14 year old Exonite talking to a real estate agent, where it's revealed that the previous people who lived in the house were hit with the good old COVID-19. Exonite isn't a fan of this idea, so he decides to burn down the house. Thankfully for the real estate agent, he sold the house before it got burnt down. We then get to episode 2, where it opens with a promotion for a dead Discord server, then cuts to a hilarious COVID-19 joke. I've sung happy birthday twice while washing my hands. I've also cleaned literally every single thing in my house. Then, in sudden panic, Exonite realises that the tax guy will be here any minute. Better empty those pockets, Exonite. The tax guy, played by some random guy, pulls up in a Tesla Model S, but comically fails to park his car. Unfortunately for the tax guy, Exonite doesn't have any money. Unpleased by that revelation, the tax guy pulls out his flamethrower and begins barbecuing the house. The fire spreads throughout the house, which ends up catching poor Exonite on fire, adding our first kill to the count. Yikes, dude. That looks like it hurt. That then brings us to episode 3, where we open up with... Exonite? I thought you died. Yeah, one thing that you'll see is that even though characters do technically die in this series, they always come back to life in future episodes. I will still count these deaths, however, because, well, I'm not James A. Janice. Anyways, a random guy knocks on the door, and well, if it isn't YouTube channel Azuka. He states that he's here for an interview. However, Exonite over here doesn't remember anything about an interview. Something seems off. Exonite says no to the interview, which the guy isn't too happy about so he decides to bring back the good old flamethrower. However, Exonite isn't having it, so he then proceeds to break out the fourth wall and complain about how in every episode so far, someone or something has been set on fire. Well, don't worry Exonite, because a new natural element has come to take its place. It's a freaking tornado! And a pretty strong one too, because it adds one more kill to the count. It's hard to see through the glitches and freezes, but it looks like Asuka got hit with a deadly flying refrigerator and then got sent through the gaping hole in the wall. Sorry buddy. We then move on to episode 4, where we see Exonite back alive yet again. This time he's on the sofa, where he hears a knock on the door. However, the knocks quickly turn to gunshots when a purple figure busts down the door with his trusty shotgun. It's revealed that this purple figure is his neighbour, and he's also played by Spiker Rider from the Spiker Rider 10 YouTube channel. Looking around, I couldn't see any other houses, so I'm not sure how he's Exonite's neighbour. Oh well, x is understandably pissed and asks why he shot down the door. To where the neighbour responds, That was a door? Yes! To be fair, x that was a pretty shitty looking door. Maybe they spent all the budget and couldn't afford a door? I don't know, man. Anyways, it's revealed that the neighbour only wanted macaroni. This genius line was actually improvised by the amazing creative mind of no other than Spiker Rider himself. No wonder he won an Oscar in 2022 for Gary's Mod Skits. Exonite then begins to throw a fit about how he hates the Gary's Mod Skits series, which is where the episode turns into a choose your own adventure. Now, this is where things get a little complicated with the death count, seeing as the two options are technically a part of the same episode, but neither or less, any deaths that happen in these two options will be counted as their own deaths. In the shotgun option, you get to shoot Exonite in the face of a shotgun. Ouch dude, that looks like it hurt. In option 2, things get a little more intense, because the neighbour has a pretty big surprise. What is the surprise you may be asking? Well it's a fucking nuke of course. The nuke sets off, killing both Spiker Rider and Exonite in the process. Now, Spiker's death doesn't actually happen on camera, but I think it's safe to assume that if he was that close to it, he probably did die. Now it's time to move on to episode 5, where we open to a car flying through the air at Mach 10 speeds. The car then pulls up to the gas station, where we cut to the point of view of the cashier. A guy in a chicken mask pulls up, where one of the most iconic lines of Gary's Mod Skits is said. How can I get some gas? The chicken man goes outside where the gas pump spontaneously combusts. This kill is further confirmed when for one frame you can actually see the chicken man's body flying through the air. Seconds later a robber walks in with a gun. The thief demands money but Exonite is not having it. 
He pulls out his gun and shoots the robber in the face, yet again adding another kill to the count. X and I walk us out of the gas station, celebrating the fact that I'm not gonna fucking die like all the other episodes. Not so fast, X and I, because the damn trailer's falling through the sky. Yet again, adding another kill to the list. Damn, this series makes no sense at all. This death leads us on to the next episode, where we see our next new character, played by Dorian from the Dorian Agrandi YouTube channel. X and I reappears again, and they meet for the first time. The two are confused about where they are, so they decide to go exploring. Now, here is where I personally start to dislike the series. The director X and I wanted to go for an actual storyline for the series, but due to how late it started, it kinda ended up feeling really out of place and didn't fit the series well at all. Despite that, I will say I do like that him taking the storyline more seriously led to some really nice looking shots. You can tell that X and I paid attention to framing more, and using a lot of wide angles really helped make the place they were in look huge, making the characters seem really small and insignificant. Anyways, they walk into the other room where they see an exit. However, things aren't as they seem, because when they try leaving, there appears to be some sort of invisible barrier preventing them from passing. This is where the random barrier starts warping, where it's revealed they're in space? What the fuck even is this series, dude? Dorian takes a closer look at what's happening outside and realizes it's just Earth. Out of nowhere, X and I pulls out a gun and shoots Dorian in the face. From what I found online, this scene is actually in reference to that now outdated meme that went viral in 2020, where an astronaut says, wait, it's just Earth. And the other guy responds with, it always has been, with a gun pulled out. This was yet another amazing innovation, this time by the actor Dorian. X and I found the idea so funny in fact that he decided to keep it in. Now it's time to move on to episode 7, where we see X and I working at a 7-Eleven. At this point it's best to just not ask and go along with it. We then see a customer pull in, yet again played by Dorian Agrandi. He asks where to buy popcorn. He purchases the popcorn, which then allows X and I to finish his shift. He walks outside, which takes a whopping 2 minutes and 20 seconds to get to. This is probably the worst episode out of all of them due to how little happens in such a great amount of time. Little to no effort went into the first 2 minutes, probably causing viewers to drop drastically. X and I approaches what I assume is where he now lives, then suddenly stops. He turns around to see a car pulling a U-turn and heading straight for him. Get out of the way, dude! Despite having plenty of time to run in my opinion, he decides not to, I guess for plot progression? We then see the car hit X and I where we cut to black. But hold on, this one isn't for the kill count as it's been revealed that he didn't die. He just got knocked out. Or was it a dream or did he get kidnapped? Again, it's best just to not look into it. Anyways, we wake up and we see a familiar sight. It appears X and I has been caught in some sort of time loop. We go through all the same stuff as before, but this time he remembers everything that happens. X and I hears their past selves coming through the hallway, which forces X and I to hide, causing past X and I to kill present Dorian. Seeming as this is a death that happened in the past, I'm not going to count this as a new death. Call me some slack here, alright? This series has way too many deaths. Anyways, it's time for the final of Season 1. Episode 8, the final episode, begins right where we left off, where present X and I sees the past X and I walk off. Present X and I decides to follow past X and I, bringing him back to the room from before. Some truly trippy shit. Suddenly, a new character appears out of nowhere through the black abyss. Wait, what do you mean this isn't a new character? Yeah, apparently the director X and I forgot to make the neighbor's character purple again, so we just have to forget about that and move on. The neighbor character repeats his famous line. That was a door. Which then X and I realizes that this is actually where dead characters go. X and I and his neighbor yet again go back to the other room, where they hear past X and I and Dorian walking through the hallway, which is where we get to see this same scene play out yet again. Talk about repetition. The neighbor gets to witness X and I kill Dorian yet again, which he too gets terrified. Honestly, dude, it's best not to question it and move on. Past X and I yet again walks off screen, which allows present X and I and neighbor to go back to the room. They yet again hear someone coming through the abyss. Why, it's the chicken man, and he's still hungry for some gas. 
The chicken can only understand a limited amount of vocabulary and gets excited when gas is mentioned. X and I and neighbor have both had enough, so they find him some gas and give it to him. However, the chicken man gets a little carried away with the gas, causing him to spontaneously combust, making him the 10th kill in the series. They then go back to the other room, where a mysterious stranger appears out of nowhere. They talk to him for a bit and realize something about him is off. It's revealed that he's actually just an NPC following a script. They start to insult him, and the NPC isn't too happy with their statements. So he pulls out some sort of sans blaster, which causes the rest of them to understandably be scared. The NPC asks them to follow him, where he takes them to the other side of the room. How useful. Except, it is useful, because the room around them starts turning white, until there's nothing more than a white abyss. This is where we get to meet the man behind it all. The Director. Played yet again by Dorian Grande. The Director is not happy that they're not following the script, and threatens to bring the post-production team into this fiasco. The characters start mocking the director, which forces the post-production team to put them in their place. With the use of some amazing digital effects made by the guys at Dumbass HQ, we see the post-production team add an earthquake to the scene, which then causes them to run away and very easily escape the white abyss into the outside world that they were struggling to get to before. Unfortunately for the characters, the director is still there waiting for them. The director starts making pay cuts for each of the actors, however before he can finish that, he gets shot in the back of the head. Damn. This is where we get to see an almost 4 minute long credit sequence to finish off the first season. So. How many people died whilst X9 and his friends tried to... I don't even know the storyline of this shit, man. Let's just get to the numbers. 11 people died in season 1 of Gary's Mod Skits. The victims were all male, giving us a complete blueberry pie. And with a runtime of 24 minutes and 27 seconds, this gave us a kill on average of every 2 minutes and 20 seconds. I'll give the golden chainsaw for the coolest kill to X and I, because it's so out of pocket and it gives us a nuclear explosion. Your machete hmm. for the lamest kill goes to the director. For someone as evil as his character, you would have thought that maybe he would have gotten a better send off than just a double tap in the back of the head of a shotgun. And that's it. Gary's Mod Skits came out in 2020 and is one of the creations X Knight has made, I guess. Due to its success, maybe? The series got green lighted for a second season, which is still being uploaded to this very day. Until next time, I'm Combine Elite, and this has been the Kill Count. Combine Elite is then shot in the head by someone off-screen, making this the third kill of Season 2 of Gary's Mod Skits.